Hey students, so this video is going to talk to you about how to understand a works cited page. So this is an example of what a works cited page looks like. It is the last page of your essay and it's essentially a reference sheet that references all the different researched sources that are found in your essay and they correspond with in-text citations. So for instance, for this citation, there should be a corresponding in-text citation that says blueprint layout. Also in the essay, there should be a corresponding in-text citation to this citation that says Clinton, and then it goes on so forth. Formatting wise, your works cited page should have double spaces in between each source and be in alphabetical order. If one of the sources start with the word an or the or a, do not count that. Instead, go, for, go with the first letter of the second word. Also, you might note that there is an error on this works cited page. Do you see what it is? Well, what it is is that the lines after the first line need to be indented, and they're not. Kind of think of it as a reverse paragraph. Now, a works cited page is important, one, because it stops you from getting in trouble for plagiarism. Two, it brings reliability to your essay. People will know that they can trust what you wrote because you have a long list of reliable resources showing that you did your research. And three, if somebody wants to use your essay to help them with their own research, you've given them a list of places where they can find more information. So this applies to you as a writer, and it also applies to you as a reader. Now, let's do a more in-depth look. So here we have the general rule of thumb of how you do a MLA citation for a book. And I have three examples of how this might look. So the first one is very straightforward. It has one author, has the title of the book, and then it has the city of publication, the publisher, the year is published, and the fact that it was found in print as opposed to the web. Now you're going to see essentially the structure in all book citations. But there's going to be minor differences. So let's look at the last name, first name section. So here you can see there are some differences. That's because this book has one author, this book has two author, authors, and this book has an, more authors than we know. So if you have two authors, you go last name, first name, and first name, last name. So the two authors are Paula Galipsy and Neil Lerner. Now with this one, some journals can have 16, 20 different contributors all listed as authors. If that's the case, if you have more than generally three authors, you should put et al. So here we know that Anne Francis Wasaki was the main author and that there are many others who assisted her in writing it. So those are the different ways that you'll see the authors listed. And the reason why it's different is based upon the numbers of authors for the book. Now for the title, what I want you to note is that it's italicized. And that's because a book is a longer piece of writing. Remember, longer works are in italics, while shorter works are in quotation marks. Then the rest of it remains the same. You have this city where it was published. You have the name of the publishing company. You have the year of publication, and then you have whether you found it in print or on a website. So this is how you do the MLA citations for a book. Next, let's go to a website, and you're going to notice that there are, are a lot of similarities. MLA, MLA citations tend to follow the same form. The only reason why they differ is if there needs to be additional information or less information in there based upon the source type. So let's look at an MLA web website citation. So here in the second one, we see that we have the author, Susan London. But there's no author here. Why is that? Well, that's because websites are kind of notorious for not listing all the information necessary. In this case, this website did not list its author. Not listing an author is usually a huge indicator that you're dealing with an unreliable source. So if you don't have an author, you need to go through the source that you're using and make sure that it's actually one you can even use for your essay. The odds are it might not be. So once you have the author's last name and then first name, you go with the title. Now what I want you to notice about this title is that it is not italicized. It is in fact put in quotation marks. 
That is because it is the name of a web page, and a web page is considered a shorter piece of work, like a short story, or a news article, or a poem. Therefore, it's in quotation marks. Now, what is italicized is the name of the website. So WebMD is the website on which this article or web page is found. And eHow is the website on which this article or web page is found. And you'll note that both of these websites are unreliable sources, so you wouldn't be able to use them in an essay anyway. Uh oh. Wow. Now, next comes the publisher. So WebMD published the WebMD website. Demand Media published the eHow website. Then you have the date of publication. So this web page was published on the 25th of September 2014. Here we have ND, which means no date. The website did not say when this web page was published. Therefore, it cannot be included, but you can't just leave it blank like you do for the author. Instead, you put ND for no date. Next comes the media in which you found it. As it's a website page, it probably came from the web. And then you have your date of access. This is when you, as the researcher, found this. So for instance, I found the webpage How to Make Vegetarian Chili on July 6, 2015. So that is how you cite a website page. Now, next, let's look at some exceptions. So if you have a book or a website citation and you see the letters ed dot what that stands for is editor that means that someone went through and they edited an original piece of work so if i read this i would know that the original author is charlotte bronte and she wrote the work jane eyre and what this means is that margaret smith edited jane eyre's work she's not the author she's the editor and then i have the rest of my information now, one thing to note is here where it says 1998. That is not, it is not when Jane Eyre published, or, or when uh, Charlotte Bronte published Jane Eyre. That was published a long time ago. What this is, is when this version of the book, edited by Margaret Smith, was published. You always go with the most recent publication date, not with the original publication date. So next, we then have this exception of trans. What does that mean? Any guesses? Any guesses? Well, it means translated. So Madness and Civilization, a history of insanity in the age of reason, who was written by which was written by Michael Foucault, was translated by Richard Howard. That means that originally this work was not in English. And Richard Howard translated it into English so that we could read it. And his version of this work was most recently published in 1988 in New York by Vintage Random House. So those are some exceptions that you'll want to be able to note. So next, um, some other exceptions that kind of break from the norm are pieces of artwork. So what I want you to notice is that in here it says New York. Now if I was going to ask you, what does that New York mean? Some of you might say, well, that must be where it was made. I mean, if in here, Oxford and New York is where it was published, this must mean that this is where it was painted. Sorry, that is not the case. When you're looking at the citation for artwork, this location is actually referring to where the piece of artwork can be found today. So what this citation reads is, Paul Klee made Twittering Machine in 1922. And it can be found in the Museum of Modern Art, which is located in New York. So this is actually the location of the museum where this artwork is found. And this information was found through the Art Chive on the web on the 22nd of May, 2006. So that's how you read the citation for artwork. Now, another thing you should note. This is the citation for a scholarly journal, and it looks somewhat different from the citations for websites and books. It follows some of the same rules. We have the last name and the first name, meaning our author is Nadine Dolby. I love this first name. 
And then also we have the title of her journal, which is a shorter piece. So it's kind of like a chapter in a larger book. So the title of her journal is Research in Youth Culture and Policy, Current Conditions and Future Directions, in quotation marks. We can find her article in the longer work, Social Work and Society. So this is the name of the journal, journal as a whole, and this is the name of her article in that journal. And then 2008, what is that? That is the date that it's published. So while in books, we see the publication date outside of parentheses, when looking at a journal citation, it's inside parentheses. So don't let that throw you off. This date is still the publication date. It did not provide the page numbers where we can find this. It was found on the web, and it was found on the 20th of May, 2009. So another thing that you'd want to look at is possibly the citation for an interview. So here we have a citation that is um, based upon the interview of Mary Gateskill. So here is the author, and the interview is with Charles Bach. So Mary Gateskill is the interviewer, and she interviewed Charles Bach. And this was found in the larger work, Mississippi Review. And this is the volume. And then the year that it was published, the pages that it was published on, and the fact that it was found in print. So again, notice that the publication date for an interview is found in parentheses. Don't let that throw you off. And do note that this is the author of the interview, and this is who she interviewed. All right, next, for movies or documentaries, these are a little different. Instead of starting with any author, you start with the title, unusual, The Unusual Suspects. Then you go to DIR, what does that stand for? The director, Brian Singer. Then you go to the performers, Kevin Spacey, Gabrielle Byrne, and Chaz Pal Palminteri, and Stephen Baldwin, and Benicio Del Toro. So these are all the primary actors who acted in the movie The Unusual Suspects. This is the publishing company, and this is the year on which it was released. And what is the media? It's not print, not web, it is film. So those are just some of the basics to a work cited page. Now, we're not expecting you to memorize every single punctuation rule. I know that there's online citation builders that will make these things for you. It'll make an entire work cited page for you. But if the work cited page does something wrong, you can't blame the works cited page builder. It's, it's your problem. So when you use a work citation builder, make a work cited citation builder, make sure that you take a look at it and make sure that everything looks okay. Also, you want to be able to read the citations of other people in case you need to glean some information from what they have. So make sure that you have a general understanding of how information is set up on work cited pages. All right, good luck. Oh, really quickly, um, on the assessment, you're going to get some questions such as, if you are going to write an essay that uses recent research, so say this works cited page actually had an article from 1970 and an article from 1957. If that was the case, these are not recent articles. They are not appropriate for a prompt that's asking you for recent research. So if you have a question that says, which of the following articles would not be appropriate for a prompt asking for recent research, you would look for ones that have dates that are really old, all right? Not current research. Now, say that you have a prompt that asks for you to only use reliable resources. And on your Works Cited page, you have something that says Wikipedia. That is not reliable research, so you can't use that. So those are two questions that you can, oh, another way to know it's not reliable research is if the author's not there. Okay, I think I'm actually done. Check, yeah, I'm actually done. So those are three of the types of questions that you may see on your um, assessment. It might ask you, which one of these is not reliable? Which one of these is not reliable? Which one of these is not current? So make sure that you're able to identify that. All right, well, good luck on your assessments.